I'm going to start. Um, I'm in the Sarpe, a PhD candidate from the University of Padua, uh, working uh, under the supervision of Professor Fabio Vandin. And today I'm going to present a joint work with my colleague, uh, Diego Santoro, about our work, uh, um, Ombra Rigorous Estimation of the uh, Temporal Between Centrality in Temporal Networks. So uh, let me start by introducing a bit of uh, context in particular uh, we all know that uh, the network paradigm uh, allows us to analyze uh, many real world networks so for example social networks biological networks and many others uh, one thing that mm, let's say all these systems share uh, in common is that they evolve through time so for example uh, each time a friendship of course of a social network then of course the, the structure of such network changes so uh, in order to account for, uh, let's say, this behavior, um, researchers introduce temporal networks. Uh, the model I'm referring to is that we keep for each edge uh, the timestamp uh, of the uh, event that the edge is modeling. So uh, by accounting for the time of the various events, we have a new model, which is somehow more powerful than static uh, networks, uh, the, the networks without uh, these uh, timestamps. And uh, the, this model uh, um, allows us to uh, analyze and understand better the, the behavior of uh, the, the systems that we, mo we model with, with, such, uh, with such tool. So uh, mm, by defining novel primitives on, on this type of data, we are able, we are able to, to gain novel insights about uh, our domains. So one of the most important, uh, let's say, primitives is the study of central nodes in temporal network, and in particular, the temporal between the centrality. Uh, rather, uh, additional to the applications that we have for, for, for standard network, let's say, in temporal networks allows us to, to better study, for example, spreading processes with respect to the evolution uh, time, or to the, to the balancing of, for example, EP networks uh, with respect to the, to the time of when the balancing happens. And for, uh, for, for graph and not classification in, in temporal networks. So let me uh, formalize better the, the definition of, a, of temporal between a central. In particular, uh, we define a, a temporal network as a pair of UE, where VU is the set of nodes, uh, of N nodes, and this is the set of M edges, uh, where uh, each edge is a triplet with two nodes and the time at which the, the edge occurs. We then define a temporal path as a sequence of edges uh, of the temporal network uh, of contiguous edges. So for example, the, the end point of each, uh, of each uh, edge is the starting point of the next edge. Uh, but in addition to, to this requirement, uh, we have that uh, we need the um, timestamps to be increasing, so uh, not decreasing. And, Additionally, uh, we require the, to each, uh, each node of the network to be visited at most once. So, uh, for example, here in the figure, we have that this in red is not a, a temporal path since the uh, first edge occurs uh, after the, the second one uh, with, with respect to the timing. Uh, and so this cannot be a, a temporal path. While instead, if, if we look at this uh, orange path, this is a, is, is a path between the, the nodes of V1 and V8. Um, additionally, we say that a node V is internal to a path uh, if it's different from the, let's say, the, the, the starting node or the sync node. So for example, V3 or V7 in this uh, orange path uh, are internal nodes. We then define a temporal walk uh, as, let's say, a path where we, we drop the constraint of visiting each node at most once. So, for example, uh, here in, uh, in red, um, by going through from V1 to V2, then to V5 and V4, and again V2, and then to V6, uh, this is a temporal uh, walk, since it's time respecting. Uh, and um, it's, walk, it's a walk because we visit uh, V2 uh, more than once. We then define the, um, a temporal um, a normalized temporal between a centrality for a, for a node for a node as uh, uh, as the the sum over all pairs of nodes uh, that are different of the fraction of optimal paths that go through such node 
So intuitively, a, a high number means that uh, most of the paths for, for the source and target uh, use uh, such node B. And then we normalize by, by, by standard factor. So what do we mean by optimal paths? Well, as for static networks, um, we can have the, uh, the shortest uh, optimality criteria. So in particular, uh, the, the length of the path uh, between uh, the, the source uh, and the sync node have to be uh, minimum. But in addition, uh, in our paper, we also considered the so-called the shortest uh, data restless temporal walks, optimality criteria. So in particular, we consider walks where uh, th these walks sh should be shortest between the, the source and the sync node. But uh, in addition, uh, um, su successive edges on, on such work should occur within at most delta time. So for example, delta equal to n in this figure, uh, we cannot go from V1 to V6 directly from uh, 20 to 45, since uh, the, the timing, the difference between these two is more than 10. So we have to uh, somehow perform this cycle and then go to uh, V6 at time uh, 45. So uh, everything is nice, but uh, one question that we asked uh, ourselves before studying the, the problem was, uh, is this new definition uh, providing something, um, let's say, non-trivial about uh, information about the temporal network that, let's say, it's not captured by the standard analysis? So. Um, in order to understand this, we define, uh, say, the, uh, a fairly standard object, which is the static network associated to the temporal network. This is a network, a directed network, uh, obtained by simply removing the timestamps of, uh, of the temporal network. And what we did was to uh, take, uh, let's say, a, a Facebook network, a Facebook world post network, and, to comp and we computed uh, on the x-axis the the static uh, between the centrality, so the, uh, by using, for example, Brandes algorithm on the on the static network, and on the y-axis we computed the temporal between the centrality uh, by using an exact algorithm on the shortest uh, temporal paths uh, criteria, and we computed the top uh, k fifteen uh, fifty uh, nodes, and what we see is that uh, uh, only uh, let's say fifteen of the of, of these nodes. Uh, are let's say top uh, in the top k of both the the rankings, uh, while uh, and this means that uh, if we consider only static information, we may lose uh, many many nodes that are centered in the, the temporal networks, and this motivated the let's say the study of efficient algorithms for for such problem. So, um, unfortunately, algorithmically, uh, this is a let's say very challenging task. Uh, since, uh, uh, for example, computing exactly the, the temporal between centrality of the, the different nodes uh, has, uh, let's say, many challenges, uh, um, given, for example, the, the scalability required by the algorithms, given that modern networks are um, very large. Additionally, existing uh, uh, techniques for static networks cannot be easily adapted to work on temporal networks. And the fact that state-of-the-art algorithms are uh, have often uh, impractical, let's say, complexity, even on moderately large sized uh, network. So our idea uh, was the following: to um, obtain an algorithm to compute uh, and keep a so-called uh, absolute epsilon eta approximation set. So this is a set formed of pairs where each pair is a node and uh, an estimate of the betweenness uh, value of such node. And, but with, uh, let's say, fairly rigorous uh, uh, guarantees on such estimate. In particular, um, we want that the probability that the supremum of the, let's say, the deviations of, from the estimate that we keep and the uh, actual value of the betweenness centrality uh, stays within epsilon uh, from, uh, yeah, of, of error is greater than one minus theta. And this is a fairly, let's say, standard uh, definition uh, in, uh, in data mining problems. So um, to do so, we developed our algorithm Mombra. And, uh, and in particular, um, our algorithm uh, borrows ideas from, let's say, uh, existing sampling uh, strategies um, for uh, static graphs. And in particular, the, the, the idea is to sample a pair of nodes from the, from, from the, temp, from the temporal network. 
and obtain all the optimal paths uh, that connect the, the source node to the, mm, to the sync node. Uh, so for example, in this picture is S and Z. Uh, and to do so, uh, we developed, uh, 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 we adapted uh, the so-called temporal BFS. Then uh, what one can do is, is the following, is to perform, a, 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 so, let's say, uh, informally, a backward pass that goes from Z to, to S, and for each node internal to V, uh, to, to, to a path, so for example, this node V, um, we can update its uh, uh, estimate of the temporal between its centrality. And this estimate is computed as the fraction of, uh, of paths that we observe in the, in the optimal paths that we computed. And this can be done by uh, using information only starting from, from Z and coming back to, to, to S. So um, let me briefly argue, uh, yeah, the, our algorithm um, takes as input in the temporal network, the, the sample size uh, of, uh, of of the number of samples that it has to, to take, a confidence parameter, and in, it repeats the L times the procedure that we already seen. So pick, uh, pick a random pair of nodes and uh, estimate all the uh, temporal between the values of the nodes that are internal to the paths that we compute by uh, sampling such pair of nodes. Um, so uh, the main challenges that we addressed by uh, developing such algorithm was to, in particular, take care of the uh, structure of the paths. So uh, under the two uh, different uh, uh, optimality criteria that we considered. So we devised uh, different algorithms in order to deal with the different aspects of such uh, structure of the paths. And in addition, uh, what we want to, to have is that the, the final um, the final estimate of, the, of each node is that the average over the L samples um, of the estimates that we obtain at, at each sample. And what we want to have is that uh, this estimate uh, should be, uh, let's say, the, um, uh, fairly concentrated. And how do we prove that uh, uh, these uh, estimates do concentrate? Well, in particular, we leverage the um, result from concentration theory and um, a, a fairly, uh, let's say, uh, interesting result. And it is based on the empirical variance of the of the estimates that we obtain at different steps. And I'm not going to in, into the details, but it is a, an interesting result from uh, more than point. And so we performed an, uh, an extensive experimental evaluation uh, by uh, using uh, uh, moderately large uh, data sets. And in particular, our go goals were two. Uh, the first one was to, uh, on the shortest criteria, assess the computational cost compared to the exact algorithm and the accuracy of the, of the estimates and guarantees provided by, by Umbra. And on the RTP criterion, since no exact uh, algorithm for uh, what we know uh, exists, um, or at least uh, uh, practical uh, implemented, uh, to, to show that we can use Umbra to analyze uh, uh, temporal networks under such criteria. So, uh, over, over turn lines, we compute the following, the following table, uh, where we have for each data set the average error, the supremum uh, of the errors computed by using the exact values, um, the, uh, uh, the guarantees provided by Omra, uh, and the time and memory uh, used by, by, by such algorithm. So what we see is that the average error is, very, is often really small. The guarantees provided by Yombra are tight since uh, the supremum is, is um, often close. Sorry, Ilya, you have but, one minute. You have one yeah, minute. Uh, I know, I know, thank you. And the, there is a significant reduction in computational resources. So uh, to better visualize these results, uh, we can see on the x-axis the, uh, the between us uh, value, uh, the, uh, the exact between us value, and the y-axis, the error that we have by using Yombra. And this is often one order of magnitude smaller than what we uh, uh, than the exact value. So this means that the estimates are fairly concentrated, and so uh, coupled with the guarantees that are uh, often done. So to conclude, uh, we developed our algorithm Ombra, uh, which is efficient and scalable for approximating temporal between its values, and it works under two different optimality criteria. 
And then we performed an extensive uh, experimental evaluation and uh, showing that uh, such algorithm uh, enables to analyze networks that uh, cannot uh, even be analyzed with existing algorithms. So thank you and I'm happy to take uh, some questions. Thank you. Thank you for the great talk. Thank you. Okay. Question time, we have three minutes almost left. Are there any questions? So I have one question. Yeah, sure. I had one already, but you already answered that. So I have another one. Um, since these are uh, temporal networks, it's very reasonable to think of a model where, uh, let's say an online model or a stream streaming model um, where edges arrive um, ordered by time, right? Do you think your algorithms yeah. can be readily adapted to, to deal with uh, a streaming model of this kind? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question because uh, let's say some uh, uh, existing strategies do work for online uh, estimation, but they don't care. They don't take into account the let's say the timing of the of the arrival of the edges. And I, I don't really know if it is uh, somehow uh, so easy to adapt uh, our algorithm in this scenario uh, because we still need to to have access to, for example, uh, uh, all the history of, uh, of arrivals of the, of the different uh, edges. So maybe um, uh, the bounds on, let's say, that the memory that we have to keep uh, uh, are not so, so easy to, to maintain because uh, often in streaming algorithm, you may also want some, let's say, uh, and uh, what about memory, just is, uh, smaller than the size of the network and this may maybe just an incremental to... model would that uh, that will be easier of course yeah meaning that, that just the edges uh, you read the edges from the input in in order of time and yeah yeah of course you have a bound on the computation there. okay thank you thank you